Chat about it. The new interactive internet radio station of the future. Chataboutit.com. So much media. So little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is the Mr. Media Interview, brought to you today by 1-800-DialDJs.com. If you need live entertainment for your party, wedding, bar mitzvah, or corporate event in the New York, New Jersey, or Philadelphia metro area, check out 1-800-DialDJs.com for a real good time. Okay, so where was I before the commercial? Oh, yeah. Mr. Media is recorded live from the new new media capital of the world and home of St. Leo University, Tampa Bay, Florida. Larry Minetti brought a tremendous amount of natural charisma and boundless cockiness to his role as a restaurateur named Rick, Tom Selleck's Vietnam War buddy and sidekick on the long-running CBS adventure series Magnum P.I. He brought that same strong sense of self-awareness to his role as author in his 1999 autobiography, Aloha Magnum. It's action-packed with, well, (laughs) action, as Minetti recalls a life that never knew the meaning of the word dull. Besides out-of-school tales of his friends Selleck and co-stars Roger Mosley and John Hillerman, Minetti regales readers with his encounters with the chairman of the board, Frank Sinatra, the king, Elvis Presley, Tony Curtis, and his pal and mentor, Robert Conrad. Best of all, this isn't one of those self-told stories of how wonderful Larry is. It's a warts-and-all portrayal of a regular guy who has led a pretty friggin' real great life. Larry, welcome to Mr. Media. Thanks, Robert. I'm sorry I'm late. I apologize to everybody. And um, you guys are in a city that's very close to my heart. I had not known that you're in Tampa Bay. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, I went to school there. My father owned the Fly Bar Z Ranch in Quail Hollow on I-54. And um, Robert Codron and I got in tons and tons of trouble there. And uh, I kind of grew up there. So you're in a great spot. Burn Steakhouse, Malio's. Wow. Wow, listen to that. Yeah, you know, it was it was great. Uh, even bef- after I committed to doing the show with you, and then I'm reading the book, and I see he went to St. Leo College. He yeah, was in Tampa. Well, Holy St. cow. <laughs> St. Leo says, here's the door, and get out. <laughs> yeah, well, I was going to leave that part out of the story, but yeah, like I well, said. Well, you know what, listen, I, you know, I, I didn't do too bad. I, 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 as my father said, I smiled and made it through life, so... It's okay. Hey, listen, when you look back on your eight years of Magnum, what stands out the most for you? Is it the money, the fame, the fun, the pranks? I just think it's, um, you know, it's funny you said that because I put a call into Selleck today, and uh, somebody wrote this long letter, and they asked if they could get a picture of him, and, and I signed. And, you know, he doesn't sign hardly any. He's tough to deal with with, with autographs, so uh, I got him to sign it. But I think it's the... The people out there that really enjoy and watch the show and and we're giving back, and at least I am, I'm giving back. I feel, you know, uh, the fortunate opportunity that I had as becoming an actor and being uh, semi-successful. And I just, um, I I love every minute of it, and I couldn't pick another occupation if you put me on my head. (laughs) Well, uh, let's talk about uh, Tom for just a minute. I mean, he's... He's attained an almost mythic stature over the years, both as an actor and as an individual. Uh, you treat him with a lot of respect in your book. I got to ask: Is he that special, or is he just you know? Well, Tom, look. I mean, I don't know how to explain it. Tom Selleck was born gorgeous, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. so when you're born like that, like Elizabeth Taylor and Selleck, I mean, you kind of know inside of you that you're special, mm-hmm. and. He does have little idiosyncrasies, you know, I would tell him to his face, you know, but I get along great with him. He's a dear friend. Um, He's there if you need him. I mean, he's there for uh, if somebody is uh, in trouble, no matter where, he's there. He's, um, 
and you know, it's, I don't know. Hey, look, he's a movie star. I mean, he's uh, he's done some great films. He's right now currently doing a, a new uh, series. He's doing a pilot for a new cop show in New York. And uh, he, he's a great guy. I like him. And you know what? I'm the kind of guy, and if you read my book, I know you did, but I'm talking about <laughs> our friends out there. You know, I don't lie. So, I mean, if he were a jerk, I'd say he's a big jerk. So he's not. He's, uh, he's a sweet guy. Well, that and that comes across in the book that you just have a great deal of fondness for him, and uh, you tell some great stories uh, throughout the book uh, about uh, you know being on the set and and being being with him and all, all kinds of stuff that went on. Uh, one of the things that you mention is uh, uh, about how, and this is a pretty well known story, is about how he had to pass on that role of Indiana Jones, which yeah. of course made well, a star was, and a zillionaire out of Harrison that Ford. Was bad. I, I remember that exactly, and I'll, you want me to tell you a little bit about it? Sure. Yeah. Well, what happened was, is we were already doing Magnum, and uh, Bud Grant, who was the president of CBS, is pretty nice as far as network executives go, and um, uh, Sally got this offer from Spielberg to be Indiana Jones, you know, and come on, anybody's going to jump, so he said, guys, you know, I got this big movie offer, and they said, sorry, pal, but you're signed, you know, you're going to do Magnum, and we were already into Magnum, so... Um, he was, um, he was pretty, I don't know, you want to use the word upset, kind of, I don't know, kind of disappointed, but then he pinched himself and said, look, you know, here I am, there's a camera in front of me and lights, so, you know, he got the second best, and then they did a ripoff of Indiana Jones, and that was a fun episode <laughs> that we did, because I remember a lot of the stuff in it, I think they put me on a, a, a spinning pin board or something where you shoot at it. And I was spinning around because every episode they tried to do something to me, put me on a on a, <laughs> the back of a truck tied. I mean, I, they were running out of gags. <laughs> you, uh, you, you, you did. It, even, I mean, you admit this in the book. You, you have a natural way of getting on people's nerves. I think is that safe to say? Well, no, nah, I don't want to say that because then right. it sounds like I'm a pain. But you know, I could nod somebody. If um, I don't know how to even explain this, so it's I know the timing and I know uh, when to open my mouth and when to shut up, and I know right from wrong. So, but if I want to uh, agitate somebody, I can't. Or if I want to heckle, I'm look. The bottom line is I'm fun. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm there's guys at, at a party, and some guys some guys are obnoxious. You might say, "God, what a jerk!" Mm-hmm. But uh, I kind of watch it so that I'm not disliked. Now, you did enjoy uh, uh, kind of uh, picking at uh, John Hillerman a bit, right, who played Higgins? I love John. Yeah, John Hillerman's fun. In fact, I was talking to our publicist today, and she reminded me of the uh, <laughs> of the Hawaiian cruise ship thing that we did. One of them was a show with Alan Hale, Jr., and uh, she said that we were uh, – that she was uh, in his suite, and there was like two pounds of beluga caviar in her and Tom Selleck and Hillerman were scoffing it down. But that's the kind of life we led, we led, you know, on that show. I mean, I remember Selleck and I going to Caesar's Palace, and I did a, a gambling show there for him. And he was, Selleck hung out with me, and they delivered this, like, gigantic tray of black gold. And, I mean, we just sat there and filled ourselves with beluga caviar, knowing that, you know, it's not going to last forever. I don't think I've had beluga caviar since they said rap. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta get that beluga when you can. Yeah, well, it's pretty good, folks. <laughs> well, I, I want to ask you. Uh, you mentioned Alan Hale Jr., who, if, if people didn't catch that, was of course the skipper on Gilligan's Island. Um, one of the guys that that uh, directed a bunch of episodes uh, was Ivan Dixon from Hogan's yeah. Heroes, and I just, I don't know. I, I just have this curiosity about that guy. He was such an interesting character there, and then he, we never really saw him much behind the, you know, in front of the camera again. What was he like to work with? Well, he was very nice. Ivan's a big, big teddy bear, and uh, he was on Hogan's Heroes uh, for a short stint and uh, became a director, one of the resident directors. We had several directors, but he was a sweetheart. He re- you know, actually, all our all our directors were really nice because on a show like that, you had to be nice. You had big, big movie stars like Sinatra and Carl Burnett, so you couldn't come on there and be, be um, you know, be a pushy, busy buddy. But uh, Ivan now, I think, uh, has a radio show in Maui. Oh, and, really? Yeah, and he's doing well. Yeah. 
you know, you have some great anecdotes about people in here. I got a big kick out of uh, you talked about Angela Lansbury wearing a watch on the set, and when it hit a certain time of day, she just quit no matter what, right? Yeah, well, I, Angela Lansbury and I never had a word. Do you believe that? And it was almost as though it was like dismiss this kid. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and uh, I remember that I was at an Emmy show or something and that my wife and I were seated right next to her and her husband. And I sat down. Now, she had to know who I was. She did. A, we did a crossover show, and she didn't even look at me <laughs> the entire show. So I'd rather not talk about Angela. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's talk about somebody you did have a great rapport with, Frank Sinatra. He came oh, and did yeah. the show, and you got along famously with him. Yeah, Frank was... He's the greatest. I miss him. I think about him every day. And um, he was a, just a big, big, great apple pie. I mean, and there's rumors all over about, you know, one take Frank. And, you know, one take Frank is true. But Frank was the, and he was the nicest guy. I mean, I could tell you this. I remember we were on a vacation and we were in this big room. And I used to get nervous with Frank because, you know, he could be a little explosive. And um, I remember when these guys came over and they said, hey, you're Frank Sinatra, hey, Mr. Sinatra, hey, guys, how you doing? And they started talking baseball, and there were like six or seven of us, and we just went on for an hour. And, you know, these are guys, you know, just everybody put their pants on the same, but come on, we, but we were in show business, and we just kicked it around. And, and at the end of it, Frank said, see you later, we all shook hands, and went back to the table. I mean, that's how Frank was. I mean... If you treat Frank the right way, Frank was just like you and I. Hmm. Well, uh, I've only got time for one more question, and it's going to be a strange one. I don't think most people realize you were on the original Battlestar Galactica with Lauren Green. And i, yeah. I got to ask, have you ever watched the new, uh, the new version of it? Yeah, with, um, I forgot his name. Uh, uh, I, liked, I liked the show. I liked the new one. I liked the old one that I was on, you know. And um, I think that... Uh, you know, everybody in the cast are terrific. And, uh, hey, Bob, we have to tell everybody where to get the book. You know, I, these book, my book is I'm not coming to yours. that. Oh, you're ready? I am, okay. I am happy to do that. Are, are you ready? Okay. I'm ready. Okay. Folks. <laughs> so should I say it? You've got to go to the Internet and go to LarryMinetti.com, and the instructions are there, folks, and you're going to love it. It's a five-star book, and I've never had a complaint. And you guys made me homesick for Tampa now. Come on Carpen down. Springs. Oh, man, I had so much fun there. <laughs> Burt Reynolds, can you hear me? <laughs> uh, if he's got his hearing aid up, maybe he will. <laughs> oh. oh, boy. Uh, well, thank well, Larry, you so much. listen, thank you so much for joining us in Mr. Media today. It was a lot of fun to chat with you. Thank you, sir. Take care. My pleasure. You too. Bye. Bye bye. And folks, for more uh, original act, uh, interviews with your favorite uh, film and TV stars, you can surf over to our main website, www.mrmedia.com. That's mrmedia.com. That's where you can listen to my earlier conversations with Hollywood stars such as Kirk Douglas, Billy Bob Thornton, and many, many more. And please take advantage of this great offer for Mr. Media Radio listeners. Go to www.audiblepodcast.com slash mrmedia, that's Mr. Media, to get a free audiobook download of your choice when you sign up today. Again, that's www.audiblepodcast.com slash Mr. Media for your free audiobook. And subscribe to Mr. Media on iTunes and you'll never miss a show. Just search Mr. Media Interviews from within iTunes and subscribe for free. You can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many locations. If you've got an idea for a guest, email me directly at bob at andelman, that's A-N-D-E-L-M-A-N dot com. You can also follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, www.twitter.com slash andelman or www.facebook.com slash andelman. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate you sharing a piece of your day with Mr. Media. Thanks for listening, everybody.
You're listening to Chat About It, politics, business, sports, and entertainment. When it's time to chat, go to chataboutit.com. 